Hey guys, um, just wanted to start out by saying I had such a good time Wednesday at Killen Park with those of you that got to come. Missed you girls that didn't. Um, wanted to tie in what we talked about in Killen Park because I really I want that to be our theme for this year for 2020 2021 school year. <clears throat> our theme is going to be salty and lit. I just love puns, y'all. Um, and it comes from Matthew five thirteen through um, 16. And it says, You are the salt of the earth, but what good is salt if it has lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. <clears throat> you are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see, so that everyone will praise your Heavenly Father. So those are going to be our verses for 2020-2021 school year, right? And I can't think of a school year that's going to need some people to be salty and lit more than this school year. So I want to challenge y'all to put those verses to memory, okay? Um... Also, we are, you know, as a group, as a CS student group, we are covering the series FOMO, Fear of Missing Out. But I really wanted to tie that in and bring that home with our focus of being salty and lit also. So today, that's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about that. Hold on, let me <clears throat> grab my phone. Sorry, y'all. So, you know, <clears throat> on Wednesday, we discuss being a light for the world means being different, standing out from the darkness and shining differently, right? Differently enough that others can see it. They see something's different. Um, <clears throat> and when we do shine differently, it shines directly from Christ and it shows Christ, right? Remember that your life may be the only Christ someone sees. Letting Christ shine through you may be the only Bible that some of your friends ever read. They see your kindness towards others, patience when waiting, gratitude for blessings, forgiveness when wronged, and control over your tongue, and they see your respect for others. All things that most of the world don't possess, right? They will wonder, why is this person different? You know, they just found out that this person was talking about them and they it didn't bother them they just forgave them how can they do that they're gonna wonder why are you different and they're gonna want that and you know you don't even have to go and like beat them over the head with like the romans road you should share the romans road with people but you don't have to do anything to show people christ other than live a life that shines him they'll come to you they'll want to know why you're different they'll ask you um, but you know, I'm not dumb and I'm still very young and cool. And, and I get that being different as a teenager is, is a struggle, right? It's not something that anybody wants to be. Even as adults, we want to fit in. We want to have friends. We want to, to be seen as, um, I guess not really cool, but we don't want to be made fun of even as adults, you know, <clears throat> um, it may be hard befriending a loner or controlling your tongue to not gossip about someone or speaking badly of others. Showing instant forgiveness when it may not be warranted or asked for. And overlooking small situations that you've been wrong. You know, standing out from the crowd. <laughs> As a teenager, everything inside of you says, stay with the crowd. Fit in. Don't stand out. Be part of it. Blend in. <laughs> and so as a Christian teenager... That is a struggle, guys. And, and any adult who got up here and told you it wasn't, they need to really search their heart because um, it is. That's, I don't take that lightly. I don't take it lightly that you don't want to miss out on things, right? <coughs> um, you know, and believe it or not, it is a struggle. It's a struggle your parents had. If they told you that they didn't, they're either very, very, very strong Christians 
or they're just not telling you the truth and we'll pray for them. But it is a struggle that we've all faced. So you're not alone. You're not necessarily wrong for having these feelings. It's how you respond to them. And I wanted to take today to give you some wisdom around helping you understand that um, how to maybe be salty and lit and to overcome that fear of missing out, okay? So there's several things that I want you to understand. First thing that I want you to understand, number one, understand that our mind is a tricky thing and it cannot always be trusted, guys. You know, if I'm, con I don't know if y'all ever heard this, but the grass is always greener on the other side. You know, if I'm constantly looking at somebody else's life, if I am constantly seeing all the things that they have that I don't have, if I'm constantly like, oh, I can't play softball as good as Bailey. Oh, I can't play volleyball as good as Aubrey. Ayla can do her back handspring. If I'm constantly worrying about, well, Olivia cheers better than me constantly looking at all the ways that everybody else can do things that I can't do, y'all, I'm wasting my life. You will never get those seconds back again. So if your mind is constantly worrying about all these things that others have that you don't have, you're wasting time making your own life great. And if you, and if you spend your life look, trying to make yourself like someone else, what kind of life is that? God didn't give me my life so I could try to be like P the rest of my life. Granted, it'd be great to be like P, but God didn't make me Presley. God made me Sarah. Um, and also, you know, it's like the grass is green on the other side. If you're constantly looking at how great someone else has it and, and how bad you have it, your mind is going to believe it, right? Oh, well, this person got a new car. Oh, this person has the best shoes. This person has name brand whatever. This person makes a team all the time. They get more playing time. This person has the best boyfriend or girlfriend. If you're constantly looking at those things, you're going to feel bad in your own life, right? It's um, it's kind of it's called the angel devil effect. At, I call it at work. And same thing with people. If you don't like somebody, then you it's called the devil. You have the devil ears on them, and it, and you're constantly looking. Nothing they do is right. Doesn't matter if they gave you a million dollars, you would be like, oh, they're probably gonna blow up in my face. And then if somebody you do like, nothing they do is wrong. They can slap you in the face and you'd be like, oh, ha, ha, I must have had a fly on my face. Same thing with your own life. If you're constantly looking for the bad, you're going to find it. If you're constantly looking for good in someone else's life, you're probably going to find it. But if you're looking for it on social media and to the outside world, remember perspective that we learned about. Not everything is as it seems. They have struggles too, just like you. So worry about making your own life good. Don't let your mind play games on you. So number one, <coughs> understand that our mind is a tricky thing. And it can't always be trusted. Number two, understand that all of us has faced this struggle, which I've already said to y'all. We've all faced this struggle. And if you don't believe me, then, well, you're wrong because I'm right. <laughs> but the Bible says I'm right. Um, 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, no temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way to escape that you may be able to endure. So guys, you aren't the first one who's ever struggled with wanting to fit in or missing out on things and the struggle that is with being a Christian and a teenager. You're not. You're not the last one that's going to struggle. But God has the power to give you to make the right choices. You just have to allow him to give you that power. He says he has provided a way out of every single situation. He's pro and, the, and the best way out of being attempted to do something is not put yourself in there in the first place. Um, but that's not an excuse. If you're sitting around saying, oh, parents just don't understand. They don't know how hard it is to be a teenager. Well, all those things. It's true. We don't know what it's like to be a teenager in social media world, but we do know what it's like to be a teenager. <clears throat> and it hasn't been that long ago for me. And I remember the struggles of being a, a teenager and living in a Christian home and that battle of, I want to fit in, <clears throat> but I know what the Bible says too, right? 
the Bible says he's given you away. All right, so number one, understand that our mind is a tricky thing. Number two, understand that all of us have faced this struggle. And number three fits in with number two. Understand that you have no excuse for your decisions, right or wrong. God said he gave you a way out. And, and you have no excuse for the decisions and choices you make, good or bad. You own those. If you make a decision, you make it on your own power. Unless someone is standing there holding a gun to your head and you still have the power to make your own decision. If someone's holding a gun to your head and says, give me all the money in the bank, I have the, I have the choice of saying no or giving them the money. I still own that choice. You and you alone are accountable for your choices. And all choices will be held, you'll be held accountable for them. <clears throat> um, sorry, y'all. Galatians 6, 7 and 8 says, <clears throat> um, Do not be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God. You will always harvest what you plant. Those who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature will harvest decay and death from that sinful nature. But those who live in, in live to please the Spirit will harvest everlasting life from the Spirit. Let me go to this. All right. This one says, do not be, same verse, just new uh, NIV version. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please the flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit from the Spirit will reap eternal life. And that's not just saying like God's this mean man who's going to come down on you. And oh, if you sin once, he's just going to rain down fury and hell and just beat you to death. What he's saying is, what you, re you reap what you sow. A farmer sows corn. They're not going to come back and reap cotton. They planted corn. They're getting corn. Same thing with us. <clears throat> we plant things, they're going to grow. We're going to reap what we plant. If we plant things that are not pleasing to God, that it will hurt our bodies, that will hurt others, we're going to reap hurting others. A bad reputation. Things in our life that we have to overcome. That's what he's saying. You have consequences for your actions. Not just God, just mean man raining down punishment on you. You, you sowed it those are the consequences. If I go walk in front of a car, the consequences I'm probably going to end up in heaven or very, very maimed. I can't walk in front of a car and expect to go flying on a fluffy rainbow, right? All right, so number one, understand that your mind is a tricky thing. Number two, understand that all of us have faced the struggle. Number three, understand you have no excuse for your decisions. Number four, Understand that your actions don't just affect you. They have a ripple effect. So understanding that if I choose to gossip about someone, not only am I accountable for those my decision, <clears throat> I'm affecting others. If I choose to <clears throat> be ugly on the basketball court, <clears throat> that affects others. If I choose to not share Christ with someone or not to live my life showing Christ, that affects someone's eternity, or could, all right? All right, number five. <clears throat> I want y'all to listen to me. Number five, understand that some friends are worth missing out on. Let me read that again. Understand that some friends are worth missing out on. Guys, I'm telling you, I don't care if they're the most popular thing since last bread. They've been on TV. They know... Nick Saban, the Kardashians, whoever you like, some of them singers, I don't care who they are. Some friends are not worth having. Some are not. You will miss out on a whole lot of bad by choosing the right friends. 1 Corinthians 15, 33 says, <clears throat> what that said? Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. 
Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. I don't care how great of a person you are. If you hang out with bad crowd who have a bad reputation, your reputation eventually will be bad, whether you do it or not. You can be the same person, have the same actions, do the exact same thing you did before you became friends with them, and your reputation will still be ruined because of who you hang out with. Odds are, there's like a 99.9% .9 chance you're not going to just still be the same person and hang out with the bad crowd. You're going to become and do the things they do. Do not lose yourself to somebody else. Please, guys. <clears throat> All right, what is that? Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. <clears throat> understand, number six, understand that God's plans for our lives <clears throat> are to bring us good and a future filled with hope. All right, so Jeremiah 29, 11. Y'all can't get to Jeremiah, sorry. Jeremiah, and y'all may all know this. <clears throat> if it's not one of the verses that you cling to and memorize, you should. Jeremiah 29 11 for I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you a hope and a future did y'all hear that I know the plans I have for you God God knows God has plans for you <clears throat> plans to for good the new living translation says they are plans for good and not disaster to give you a future and a hope God has plans for you. Good plans. Good plans for you guys. So who do you think has a better understanding of what it takes to make a great future in life? God or your 13-year-old buddy? Who are you going to listen to? Are you going to worry about missing out on God's plan for your life? Good future. Hope. Prosper you. Not necessarily prosper in money, but prosper your life where you're fruitful and you have a great life and you have an impact on others and you do have a good life. At the end of your life, you look back and say, it was good. Thank you, God, for blessings. You trust God, the man who you trust your eternity in, who you trust to save your soul. You trust him or you trust a 13-year-old buddy. Think about that, guys. When you worry about missing out or not being part of the crowd and following some kid you're following some kid who has lived for 13 years and knows nothing. They know as much as you do. Who are you going to trust? It's up to you. All right. Number seven. Well, let's review. We got number one, understand that our mind is tricky. Number two, understand that all of us have faced this struggle. Number three, understand that you have no excuse for the decisions you make, right or wrong. Number four, understand that your actions don't and choices don't just affect you. They have a ripple effect. Number five, understand that some friends are worth missing out on. Number six, understand that God's plans for our lives are to bring us good and a future filled with hope. Number seven, understand that God has given you the power through him to do anything. Philippians 4.13, what is it? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But if you're leaning on your power to be salty and lit, you guys, you're going to fail. We are humans. We can't be and act like Christ and shine Christ through our lives on our own. We're not Christ. I can't shine for Christ. I can't forgive somebody who's wronged me even though they don't say they're sorry. I can't have patience with someone. I can't care about others above myself. I can't invest in the lives of a bunch of middle school girls on my own. On my own, I'm selfish. I'm weak. But through God, you can do anything. You know, any situation. And, you know, I was thinking about that with the, um, with the flashlight. And we talked about that this week. Um, and I'm going to share an example with y'all, so just kind of come back to it. So number eight, understand that you can't be the light and salt without Christ lighting up through you. Kind of the same thing as the last one, but the last one, we have his power to make choices. This one I'm talking about, you can't be salty and lit. It's Christ being salty and lit through you. And Psalms 119, 105 says...
if I can get to it. Someone's got a lot of books. Oh no, and I started at the number first one too. Now I gotta go to 105. Okay. Psalms 119, 105. Keep going. Your word is a lamp to guide my feet, a light for my path. Who is? God is. God has to shine through us. How does he shine through us? Well, first of all, being in his word. Because the more we're in his word, the more we talk to him, the stronger we're going to be, right? The stronger our light's going to be. The more power uh, we're going to have in our flashlight to shine for Christ, right? We can't do it without him. And, you know, I remember so vividly people growing up, people being like, pray, read your Bible, pray, read your Bible, go to church, pray, read your Bible, go to church. It was like those three things were a magical potion to make your life great. And, and I think that it's kind of lost its meaning and it's kind of become like one of those cliche things like um, that we don't put a lot of stock in. And I think a lot of times teenagers are like, oh my gosh, I got it. But I don't think that we really understand how powerful it is. You know, just like <clears throat> my relationship with you guys. If I didn't talk to y'all, if I didn't want to invest in you, if I didn't come to your, to your games, do events outside of <clears throat> here, really be part of your life, would we really have a relationship? You'd walk in the door and I'd teach you and you'd leave. Just like think about those teachers who you, you're not close to, who you walk in the door, you sit down, you're a number, they teach you, you take a test, you're done. They don't, they don't even know your name. You're number 24. Think about those teachers who invest in you. They know you. They know your life. They know about you. They know your likes. They ask you about your games. They ask you about your events. Those teachers you have a relationship with, right? Don't you learn more through them? Don't they impact you more? The same thing goes with Christ, y'all. The closer we are to him, the more we are going to act like him. Just like your friends. Bad company corrupts good character. Same thing. The closer you are to Christ, the more you act like him. Well, he's not someone that I can just like sit here and hang out with on the couch, right? It's a little bit harder. So we have to be in his word. We have to be reading. We have to be talking to him through prayer. If you don't know how to pray, that's okay. Just for one minute, take time to thank God. Spend five minutes in prayer. One minute, thank God. Set a timer. He's, he's okay. Keep your eyes open. Write stuff down. One minute, thank God. Then for one minute, tell God how great he is. Then for one minute, ask for any kind of things around your personal life. One minute, ask for things for family and friends. One minute, pray over the country or someone specific. And you're done. Start there. It doesn't have to be perfect, guys. You just got to do it. You just got to talk. <clears throat> um, so getting in the Word and praying, being in church, learning, that's how your light's going to shine. All right, last one, number nine. Understand, I want you to listen to me, understand, you can still have a great teenage experience and be a Christian. What? I said it. You can still have a great teenage experience and be a Christian. You can attend games. You can yell at refs. You can dress up head to toe. You can hang out with friends. You can have fun at school. You can play sports. You can dance. You can gymnastics. You can <laughs> go hang out with your friends at a party with clean items. Not like some, some parties. No, you shouldn't go to. You can go to bonfires. You can go to the mall. <clears throat> you can do whatever you want to do as a teenager. <clears throat> you can even have a TikTok and dance on TikTok. Being a Christian doesn't take those things away from you guys. You're not going to miss out on those things. All being a Christian does is change how you do them. That's it. So when you're playing sports and you get frustrated, remembering <clears throat> that your witness is more important than knocking number five out. Is that hard? Please believe, guys. Look, you know, y'all know me. I can talk trash with the best of them. But remembering how you're supposed to act when you hang out with friends, making sure you're not gossiping, changing this, changing the conversation. When you're at school, saying hi to that person who has no friends, being a leader. When you're doing a TikTok dance, making sure that it's not vulgar, that the words are not bad, that you're doing a clean dance. You're not up there shaking it for everyone. That, you know, wear cute clothes, but make sure that your cute clothes cover your dang tail and cover your stomach and your chest. 
Boys don't need to be seeing that. Cover yourself. You can still be cute and still leave some things to the imagination for people, right? So let me tell you, what did I say? You can still have a great teenage experience and be a Christian and not miss out. The only thing you'll miss out on is the things that will lead to destruction and hurt you in the end. I promise you guys, I've, I've been there not so long ago, even though y'all may disagree. And I have a 15 year old who's driving. I'm still young enough and cool enough in my mind that I remember it. I do. I remember it. So I want to encourage y'all. I want to encourage you. These are the things I want you to fear missing out on, okay? I want to encourage you to fear missing out on impacting someone else's life. I want to encourage you to fear missing out on being nice to someone who needs it that day. I want to encourage you to fear missing out on being able to show forgiveness. Fear missing out on showing kindness. Fear missing out on being a leader for your school, friends, teammates in the world. Fear that. Fear missing out on that. Fear missing out on your God-given ability to make an impact on this world. Fear missing out on showing respect to adults. Fear missing out showing kindness to an elderly woman who's trying to get her groceries at Walmart and you can help her. Fear missing out on touching lives. Fear missing out on being a leader because guys, y'all are all leaders. You are. You have it in you. You just have to be more afraid of missing out on touching someone's life and making a change than you do fitting in with the crowd. And I promise you, everybody else in your class, they're fearing the same thing. None of them want to stand out either. They all are going to follow. They're, follow they're, they're, they're followers. It's part of being a teenager. So that person who steps out, they're not seen. You're not going to be weird or made fun of. If you're being that leader, people are going to follow. If you're nice to that kid who has no friends, others will follow. You have a platform and a responsibility to make sure you do not miss out on being a leader and impacting lives. And guys, this is so, like, I didn't get this in high school. And I'm a natural leader. And I had a huge platform and I was so worried about missing out or being made fun of or not losing, not being able to select it for homecoming court again or not making student government that I didn't step out as a leader to stop people from making fun of. I was nice to everyone and I could hang out with any group. I was never mean to anyone, but I wasn't that leader I should have been. And I don't want that for you. Okay. I will love you. And I know this lesson was long, but my prayer is you watched the whole thing and you got something from it. Please, guys, please take this to heart. I love you. See y'all soon.